Hey, good morning. This is Jerry over at Wealth Dynamics. Hope you're having a good day today. And I want to give you a really quick live stream here and really pose the question to you this morning. Have you ever asked yourself, when you work with a financial advisor, when you pay investment management fees, when you pay commissions, what are you actually paying your financial advisor for? So have you asked that question before? I think a lot of us, when we work with financial advisors, we take it at face value that they cost something and that it's usually a fee. And that's just the way life is. And we go with it and we don't really think about it or wonder if it's a good idea or if the fee is a good, a, a, fair, a fair amount uh, or really what are we getting in return? You see, I think a lot of you, when you sit down with a financial advisor, you do it because it's one of those things you're supposed to do. And as long as you feel like they know what they're doing, it's a don't ask, don't tell policy. You don't really care that much. You hope they handle it. They're the professional after all. And so you're gonna let them run things for you. And you don't really check on things like fees or things like performance or actually like inspecting what is their job and what are they performing for you. So I wanna break this down. When you pay someone for something, whether it's financial advising, real estate, or anything, there's four or five things generally that you're paying them for. And you wanna know this, you can identify what you're gonna pay your financial advisor to do for you. So number one is you can pay somebody for their time. Okay, so you can pay them for their time. Now this would entail that their time is worth a great deal and that it, it costs money for their time, which would basically mean that the more time you spend with that person, the more value you should receive. So in a business partnership, sometimes you'll pay a business partner for their time even though they're not going to get financially involved or do the work for you, but they will give you their time and their time is worth something to you. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is you can pay somebody for money. Straight up, like you pay them for their money, it's almost like a loan uh, type of scenario and they're gonna give you their money and nothing else. So that's the second thing you can pay something somebody for. The third thing you can pay somebody for is their creativity or their, their ideas. Okay, so you can pay someone for their ideas, for their creativity. Uh, and basically, you know, they probably won't do the work, but they'll bring ideas to the table for you. Okay, so we've got time, we've got money, we've got ideas. The next thing you can pay somebody for is their connections. So they've got connections and you want access to those connections because you think that it's gonna make progress for you. You can pay someone for connections. And the last thing you can pay somebody for is work to actually do the work to implement all that stuff, right? And if you look at traditional business models, usually when you pay someone for work, that's the lowest wage. That's why the the subcontractor makes less money than the general contractor. That's why the, the guy flipping the burgers makes less than the franchisee or the manager. Typically, the closer you are to the actual work, the less money you're going to get paid. That's how business works. So if we take that filter, we've got time, we've got money, we've got ideas, we've got connections, and we've got work, and you filter your financial advisor through those, those five items, you can identify what you're paying them for, and you can determine whether or not you're overpaying that individual, okay? So the first thing you're, you could pay them for is time. But I want you to ask yourself, what is their time actually worth to you? When you leave their office, do you end up with more money? Usually, no. They might tell you you could have more money in the future, but they can't promise it. So the time thing is not really legitimate. All right, so the next thing you could be paying them for is you could be paying them for uh, their ideas. Their ideas on investing, their ideas on uh, finances, their ideas on planning. Now the problem is their ideas typically come from a broker dealer firm and a licensing exam they took from the government which means their ideas are everyone's ideas. Every single financial advisor is generally going to tell you the same thing. They're gonna tell you to diversify, to allocate your assets to dollar cost average, max out your 401k, put the difference in a Roth, and if you need to, you can start using REITs, uh, DPPs, variable annuities, et cetera. That's what all of them are going to tell you. So, so the ideas thing really isn't worth the fee either because honestly, and you guys might not know this, they have something now called a robo-advisor. You can go online for almost free and have an internet uh, uh, financial advisor put your plan together for you, give you the ideas for li literally nothing. Like almost no money at all. So the ideas thing, even if you're paying for ideas, you're overpaying. The next thing you could be paying them for, like we talked about, is their connections. 
So they could have connections. Now, if your financial advisor introduces you to people, then that would be connections. If those people are valuable and they help you with uh, taxes or they help you grow your business, you know, that can be a valid reason to pay a financial advisor. Uh, and, and a lot of financial advisors don't do this, I would add, because they're so busy managing their client book and, and actually like doing the work of the business that they don't have time to look up and, and network for their clients and find out who needs to be connected to who. That's something that I do for all of my clients. We love doing that for our clients. Now, the, the next thing you could pay your advisor for is their money, which already like automatically, that's not how it works. You guys know that when you work with a financial advisor, they give you no money. Uh, you give them all of your money. So you're not paying them for the money, which means the thing you're paying them for is work. You are paying your financial advisor for work. Now realize the work entailed is this, filling out forms, asking questions to the client, submitting those forms to compliance, telling compliance how your client wants to be invested, and maybe building some asset allocation models based on software technology that auto-populates the entire thing for you. So you're paying somebody for a task that basically could be done by a virtual assistant and a website is what that comes down to. And I want you to ask yourself, that average fee of, of 1.25 to 1.5 a year, that adds up to 30% of your overall portfolio. So if you had a million dollars in retirement, you know, between now and the next 30 years, you would pay $300,000 in fees. So I want you to ask yourself, is it worth $300,000 to pay somebody to do paperwork and to basically click buttons on a computer for me? that I could get done if I hired a, a virtual assistant for $3 an hour to fill out my forms and I go to a risk tolerance website and build my portfolio out myself for free. So that's really the value of a financial advisor. Honestly, I do think it's a dying industry. I think that financial advising as we know it is on its way out the door. And the downside to that is your money is tied to it. You're going to get caught up in the mess and it's going to affect you if you don't find a different way to invest. Now, really quickly, I can, I can poke fun at financial advisors, but if I don't tell you why I'm different, it's not gonna be a, a, a differentiator for you. So when you work with me, number one, you're paying me for my time. Okay, my time is worth about $250 to $500 an hour depending on what I'm doing. And so when you pay me for my time, for example, I had a coaching call with a client where we spent literally 10, mil 10 minutes on the phone and after that conversation, my client got off the phone and closed a million dollar deal. That's worth your time. Okay, next thing is you're paying me for my, for my uh, uh, creativity. The way we invest is not the way financial advisors invest. Some of the deals we put together, if you saw them, it would blow your mind. The way we use creative financing, real estate, life insurance, trusts, all of this stuff, we piece it together to create the ideal portfolio. Now, you're not paying me for my money. I'm not gonna loan you money, that'd be wrong, okay? You are paying me for my connections. Part of what I do is I introduce you to people you need to know. Every time we talk, I'm asking you, hey, how, what, what, are you, what are you going on? What's your next million dollar idea? Who do you need to know right now? And those are all conversations we're gonna have together. Okay, so you're paying me for my time. You're not paying me for my money. You are paying me for my ideas. Uh, you're paying me for my connections. And then you're paying my team to do the work. So all of the paperwork stuff, like I'm not gonna do that. My team is gonna do that. They're gonna do that. That's where we have administrative help. But the benefit of that is, is I'm not doing the work, meaning I'm freed up to focus on time, ideas, and connections. Think about it. If you paid someone solely for their time, their ideas, and their connections, how wealthy could they help you become? And that's what my goal is with Wealth Dynamics. So when you're looking at a financial advisor and you're asking yourself, what am I actually paying for? How do the fees work? All of those questions, I want you to ask yourself and ask them, am I paying you for time, money, ideas, connections, or work? And if I'm paying you for one of those things, which ones, which ones are they? And is it really worth what I'm about to pay you if you invest with me? Now, here's the other thing too. When you work with me, for the most part, you don't pay me. So you're getting all of this basically for free because we're gonna make the companies I work with pay me instead. So I hope that that gives you some insight. I do wanna make you a real quick offer. If you're watching this video and you had you know, a cognition on how this really should work versus the reality of how it's playing out in your life and you'd like to see it done the way I've described, I want you to click on the link in the comments, sacredaccount.com 
sacredaccount.com. Again, that's sacredaccount.com. Click on that link. And if you go there, you can see a little bit of what we do for our clients, some of the accounts we set up for them, how we can help you. If you'd like more information after that, submit your info. I can get a hold of you and we can jump on a call. I can answer your questions and ask you some questions as well. Guys, thank you for watching. Make sure that you do like, share, and subscribe. I will talk to you next time.